Hello, my name is Paula O'Brien and I'm a psychic medium. I thought it would be amazing to have some of my work filmed so I can share it with you. After doing so many shows and hearing how much everyone likes to see and hear the messages for everyone else, I thought it would be lovely to have some of the more intimate messages filmed so that we could share it with you. They're much more in depth and I think you'll enjoy watching them. Snuggle down, make a cup of tea and let's begin. Somebody's very, 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 very nervous about today. Um, but this isn't his thing at all, being in public. And I wonder if he's making me feel that Lynn could have come here. And he's not putting it off, but he's more, probably maybe because the cameras were maybe going to put her off. She's quite private. Yeah. Um, so he's pleased you still came. But that, that would be an amazing gesture on your part for her because he'll then be able to tell her everything that he needs her to know, okay? Um, I need to acknowledge your brother is here. Um, actually, there's a couple of other people too, so I need to acknowledge them before... <laughs> so, shush. Um, I don't know if I need to acknowledge your grandma, but there's an older lady that comes through with him, okay? Yeah. Um, there is a very strong J coming through with them. I don't know if it's the... The J, yeah, he's making me feel J. I need to acknowledge a Mary or a Margaret or an M-A-R name coming through. And... There's an, an M, the, the M is M-A-R, I don't know, this is Martin, Michael, an M. Martin. And Martin is to your brother, because he's come through with him, okay? Now he's younger though, he's a younger... He's nine weeks. Okay, then, but he's not nine weeks now. No. He's, I don't know, he's... Eight. I, I was going to say eight, so... Um, shush. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to tell you this stuff. Um, then I need to acknowledge him being with... Who's Robert? Or Bob, or the B. My brother is Barry John. But he doesn't get called that. No, he gets called BJ. That's what I was trying to acknowledge, not saying, because he laughs at that. Okay. Only mum calls him Barry John when he's bad. Because he's saying you can't call me by my proper name. Okay. Yeah. Because it's my Sunday name. Okay. But you can call me by my mixed-up name, which is BJ, which he thinks is very rude and very funny. Um, <laughs> It's going to be one of those sessions, I can tell, because he's got that stupid sense of humour. Um, <laughs> he's just looking at me and I'm laughing. Um, then Martin is with him. Lynn needs to know that. Because she questions. I don't know if she thinks everybody's separated or where everybody is, but she wants to make sure that they are together. In many ways... Oh, I'm going to call you Barry, I'm sorry. It's okay. In, um, in many ways, Barry feels that his reason for going across was for Martin. I don't know if that's what other people have thought, but yeah. he thinks that he's, he's questioned... He's questioned a thousand and one things. He's speaking very quickly. It's like... I don't know if he did that when he was here, but yeah. slow down. This is like, now I'm on one, I've got to carry on. He questioned how he passed, why he passed, the way it passed, the way it went, the way it did. And why? A thousand times. Why me? Why when I was so near and knew what was happening and tried my hardest to get there, why did I not get there? And the only thing that has kept him sane is the knowledge that he's there to take care of Martin. It's the only thing that keeps us. Then you're right in thinking that, because that's the only thing that keeps him going. I think we would go mad if we thought that he wasn't taken for Martin. It's the only He's been reason. So long. Then he needs to acknowledge that Martin needed him. He needed his daddy. Yeah. Um, Lynn's here to take care of the others. I'm not negating that the other children are amazing, but there was something very significant about Martin with Barry. It, it, it was perhaps the way that Martin was taken, that Barry never really got over, and the two of them as parents questioned their role in his passing. Could they have done anything? Would it have made a difference if they'd have known? He now realises that there was nothing at all that could be done. But he feels he can do more at that side than he yeah. could here. So it's kind of the split. We'll keep it. Lynn gets them and I get my little piece of heaven. Four days prior to Barry's passing, he had been in a lot of discomfort. Yeah. And he, he now knows he passed of a heart issue, but he didn't realise at the time what it was. It, 
didn't feel like that Hazel, it didn't feel like a stereotypical heart issue. If it had, he would have got it sorted sooner, he wants you to know that. I feel very uncomfortable in my back. For some reason my back is more problematic and I feel very uncomfortable in my tummy. But my heart, no, that's not how he thought it would be. He couldn't breathe. He keeps feeling dizzy, as if there's a lot of dizziness going on, as if, but he's thinking he's panicking and getting short of breath and that's causing that. Barry didn't do ill. He didn't do ill at all. And he most certainly didn't do hospitals. He'd sooner go to see the vet. Phobic over doctors. But he wished just that one time that he'd listened to himself and done something sooner. On the day it happened, Everything suddenly stereotypical to do with the pains kicked off. But there was nothing he could do to get it quicker, so Barry being Barry, I know, I'll take myself there. I'll drive myself. I won't ring an ambulance or dial 999 like a normal person would. I'll get myself in the car because he thought it would be quicker. Because he didn't think he was having a heart attack. His arm is very uncomfortable at this stage. Going into my shoulder, it's, I can hardly do the gears, I can hardly drive. As he's getting nearer and nearer and nearer, the pain is getting more and more intense. And suddenly, it happened so quickly. He needs you to know that he felt nothing. Nothing. It, it was literally like, pump. And suddenly, Martin's there. And he knew. It was the most amazing feeling to be reunited. you all so much and I'm gonna say he misses you but he needs me to say to you that he doesn't miss you because <laughs> he's with you all the time <laughs> so I miss you because it's the right thing to say because you'll expect him to say that no <laughs> but but I don't miss you at all can I ask you is there another brother that you still have here <laughs> if you said that it's the wrong one that's gone or have you made a comment that you wish it, not the other way around, but I know what he's trying to say to this, but it's making me feel like it, people are thinking it should have been the other way around. So I don't know if you're closer to Barry than you are to your brother that's here. Barry's my brother. Okay. To my mum. Okay. We have and other it, children who are my father's. Okay, so hard. Two, yeah. Brother. Um, I've never ever thought it, but we did actually think that my stepbrother, Stephen, was one who would have went first because he okay. had his mother died of <coughs> something to do with gangrene in her stomach after okay. she was born after Stephen was born okay and Stephen had the same problems okay and so you automatically assumed he'd go first and not the way it was yeah. Barry said nobody really saw him going it wasn't anybody saw although he lived a crazy life um, he He's guilty of a lot of things, <laughs> um, which will remain a secret, okay? And maybe that took its toll on him. However, I don't think anybody forecasts this coming. Okay. He doesn't want you, and the reason for me asking is because he asked, because he doesn't want you to think it should have been someone else. He, he now realises why, and he now realises the whole point in being there. I do need to say it took him a while to settle, and it took him a while to, once he got his answer, he was okay. Uh, Barry is saying he can get quite angry and when he's off on one, he's really off on one. And it, it was almost like he needed... I, I've never experienced anything like this in my life, what he's making me feel, ever. But there you go. <laughs> imagine that, that would be with you. It, and this is Barry's words. If you can imagine being put into a lunatic asylum when you don't want to be, and there's a hundred guards trying to keep you down and you're going mad like a wildcat, that's how he was when he went across. I've never sensed that with anybody before, but he didn't want to be there. And it was almost like he fought to come back. He wanted to be one of those most miraculous recoveries, like, oh, we've got a heartbeat, quickly. And he got really frustrated as to why that wasn't allowed to happen. So you will understand that, yeah. and, and, and Lynn probably more will understand it, because she knows what he can be like. He can be very moody, he can be very offity, and go off. Imagine a moody, offity angel. It, it defies belief. But that's what he was. He, I'm not having any of this, I don't want to talk to you, don't come near me. And it was only really Martin that... that I don't know what the opposite of heaven is, whether you can get a, a completely 
abominable to, to someone else, which isn't even a proper word, but you can get sent to Coventry within heaven. And that's where he was. And it, it was only when he started to accept his role for being there and Martin helped yeah. Barry through on the other side. So how amazing is that? Also makes me feel then that Martin's life wasn't taken in vain either. That the two of them were taken, albeit eight years apart, five years apart, the two of them were taken for the same reason, yeah. and that was to keep each other company. There are two grandmas that I need to acknowledge with him. Mm -hmm. I've got one grandpa, or one papa. Um, he's coming through with him also. I don't know if they're in the same space, or they're buried together, but he's making me feel that when I'm at the cemetery, Martin and Barry are with each other. Yeah, they are. So I don't know if they're side by side, or I'm, no, but they're they're, I'm together, I'm here, I'm in the same they're, space, he's saying, on top. on top, okay. He loves that. That, is there room for another one? Yeah. Because he's saying, I've got space. I don't think that's for Lynn, but he's saying I've got space. Not that she needs it. No, the plan is the plan is that it is for that because he's saying we've got it already, but it'll be a long time before. Thank you for putting that on it. <laughs> <laughs> you'll see this and she'll panic. Um, uh, there is a space there for Lynn, and I'm pleased that they did that. Um, the rest of it needs to be seen too. He needs his name on things, and yeah. hopefully Lynn will let us help with that. Yeah. Um, he's desperate to get that done to take some of the worry away from her. She's trying so hard to keep it together. The, the memory of him for everybody, it, it's, it's like she still has him here. He's in a box, he keeps saying, so I don't know if she's got like a memory box and there's things being put in it, but it's like everything that she gets, suddenly we'll put in the box, put in the box, put in yeah. the box. For her, it's what's keeping her going. There are some days when she thinks of nothing else and she can't see straight. He hates it when there's days like that. And that's probably when he's nearer to her than ever. But she likes the fact that he likes the fact that she keeps putting things in this box and saying that's your dad or that's this. And when the kids are of a certain age, she'll get them all out and she'll say this was your dad and this was him and all the little daftest of things that are put in there. For some stupid reason, I need to mention socks. I have got no idea what the socks are for. Whether he had a whole <laughs> thing with socks or he's, she's put a pair of socks in there, but the socks. Um, he doesn't like feet. No. He just keeps saying, I don't like feet. Hates them. Uh, really hates them. Uh -huh. Like, With a passion. What a strange thing to not like. Um, he doesn't even like his own feet. No. Really doesn't. He and I think them. that's why the hatred for... <laughs> oh, I covered my feet up. No. Um, and, and he doesn't like it when the big toe is smaller than the next toe <laughs> next to it. That... <laughs> so, so sorry. Mine are fine. No, I have got nice feet. Um, he doesn't like that got that now. Who gave him the teddy bear? He has a teddy bear with him. One of the kids put a teddy bear in. Okay, I don't know if it's one with a heart on it, but I need to acknowledge it's got the heart yeah. on it. It's like one of them ETU bears holding a heart, he has that with him. You need to let them know that I've got that. <laughs> He's actually making a joke of the fact that there wasn't much room in there for him. No, there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to do this impression. I'm so sorry, but he has such a stupid sense of humour. Like, it's not that I was laid in there, but imagine me laid in there and it's like, my God, how much more stuff do they think they need to put in here? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm here as well, you know? It was filled. It was. Loads of cards yeah. and photographs and verses. And so everybody got really very sentimental very quickly. <clears throat> and you were all saying things in cards that you wouldn't have said to my face. Who kissed him on the forehead? Me. You felt that. And Lynn. Could you not nearly reach? Mm -hmm. No, I had to lift his daughter up. To... Because he's acknowledging somebody that couldn't reach. Yeah. That was a very special moment for him. Julie wouldn't go back in to see him. And I, that says, come on, I'll come in with you. And you lifted her yeah, up and so I she, kiss. she kissed him on the forehead. Then he felt that too. Somebody's holding his hand. When? Um, Constantly. Really nearly didn't let go of it. Constantly. I think out of all the people that they'd had there, Lynn stayed the longest um, in their hours at a time. And he loved he loved what she did to his hair. <laughs> and he's very thankful that she did it. Did she take some? Um, no. He never ever showed his hair to anybody. He always had a baseball cap on. It was always covered and it was the one thing that we said, you know, she may have, she may have went back in and tried to give him a haircut because it was quite long. Okay. And they hadn't gelled it up. The hunt to put any jail on it. So she did it for him. Yeah. I loved that. <laughs> thank you. Will you thank her? 
from now until the end of the universe for doing my hair because it was wrong on so many levels. And I just was like... Because we joked about it when we were, stuck, when we were done talking to him. We, we joked about it. Like, then he's saying thank you because that meant the world to me. I'm not so sure that he had a cat put in with him. I'm not... Because it's like... I'm not 100% sure. He's me. more comfortable now than he was then. And there was some... A bit of a conundrum as to what to dress him in. Because I think everybody wanted him to go all tidy and nice, but it's just kind of like not him. So he's happy with what he's got. He's happy with what he's wearing and he feels comfortable. Um, I'm back to socks again. I don't know if he didn't like shoes, but I need to acknowledge that I'm just in my socks, so so I can't see his feet. He likes that comfortable. And who sprayed him? Len. Th then he smells amazing. Will you thank her from him, for making him so perfect? She, um... It was probably the only time he never put up a struggle when she was telling him what to wear and what to do and how to look because she got carte blanche and he couldn't say no. She really went like over the, overboard with it all because he couldn't answer back. She made me look the best I've ever looked my whole life. And I, I, couldn't, amazing. I couldn't take her anywhere, I couldn't show her off, I couldn't do anything. She wanted me to go feeling proud and, and going across in my Sunday best and looking who I was. And, in, in his opinion, he looked the best he'd ever looked in his whole life. And he needs to thank Lynn for that. And you need to say thank you a million times. Whoever is meriting him as a star, I, I feel I need to acknowledge him as a star. So we tell all the children that when they pass over that they are the brightest star in the sky. And if the star that they're looking at gets brighter, that means that someone else has popped in. I tell my children as well. So if it's brighter, it's because Martin and Barry John and, are together. and Granny are there. Okay. They're all together. You've got that so right. He loves the fact that you stand out there and look up at the stars and there he is shining bright every night. He... He loves that. He's larger than life. He's um, a handful. It, it, he fidgets and he doesn't like to sit still in one position for very long. And um, he wasn't sure how he'd be in a confined space today, but he's done really well. And his knees constantly going. Yeah, it's I'm like, trying I don't to keep you... mine still, but it's like, <laughs> it will be him that's it's doing a habit, it. And it's, yeah, like... it's like, and I yeah. actually feel like I want to <laughs> still his hand and say, "Sit still, for God's sake." But or the foot goes like it, that. It's it, that's the way he fidgets. He has yeah. so much nervous energy. Yeah. Um, he's also not a great lover of people. Um, he doesn't trust very many people. I know only a very small fraction of people that he would trust. He's just said the nicest thing to me and that he feels calm and comfortable in my presence and that is why he wanted to come through the times that he has and I feel that's an honour for me yeah. because he trusts nobody and you've got to get to know him before you get to know him. Yeah. And, and I feel that he's dropped his barrier for me and he knows that you would expect nothing else of him. Yeah, that's right. And he's done it for you and he's done it for Lynn. Five is important. I, I, I keep on getting told five. I don't know if that's five children or we need to acknowledge five or the fifth or the month of May. Five children. Then he's acknowledging the five. But out of that five, he has one, so there's four here. Well, three are his, but he treated the four as his. Doesn't it? Doesn't matter matter. who the father is to him. Yeah. It was it was his child. Okay. It, if it came from Lynn, then it's his. Um, he needs to acknowledge that he's looking after all five from where he is, and will continue to do that for a long time. Lynn will benefit hugely from what he has to tell her when she comes to see me, what you've arranged, and that's, he's really grateful for doing that. He thinks that was the best way around to do it and wondered how you got that idea in your head. Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> I didn't, to be honest, I didn't know how Lynn would react with the cameras. And <coughs> I know she said that she would, but I could tell by the look on her face when she agreed that she would do it. There was a lot of apprehension and a lot of anxiety, and I didn't. I would rather she got something comfortable for her. Yeah. And Barry is actually acknowledging that he arranged that too, so he's a clever guy. Um, I don't know if she's been thinking of moving or the th wanting to change things at home. Yeah. But he's saying it's okay. It's almost like she's waiting for permission. She's like, show me a sign, tell me it's okay. Today he's giving permission that she needs to move forward with that. This isn't about her loving him any less or 
or changing things to eradicate his memory because he's always with her in her head, in her heart. But he feels that she's kind of pulling back on things that she should be doing and this has to do with the house and the home and the way it's set up, yeah. okay? Give her permission from me and tell her it's okay to do. She, she worries about the stupidest of stupid things. That's she what makes her... She won't go to her bed. ...who she is. That's what makes her unique. It needs to be changed. She won't go to her bed. She sleeps in the living room on the couch. Can you help her sort that? Even if it means changing the bed or moving the bedroom around or doing something. It, it's... I was to say, I've never said this before, but I think Barry's just a person that's just unique to himself. He wants normality to start coming in. Normality needs to come back into the lives for everybody's sake. And one of the only people that can make that happen is you. He hates to put that burden of responsibility on you, but you've got broad shoulders. You can do that. She'll listen to you. She never listened to him. She's stubborn and... Yeah. and very strong willed. They worked both ways with them. Yes, they were. They got on. Very. Looking at their relationship from the outside, it was ridiculous. It was failed. It was like, how would anybody want to stay in that? It was, I love you, I hate you, I hate you because I love you. And <laughs> But that's who he was, and that's still very much how that is. He knows she goes through stages of being angry with him, almost for dying, yeah. and gets really cross with him, and why did you have to leave me? And he's sorry he didn't mean to. And if he could turn back time. When he gets embarrassed, he dips his head. <laughs> and it's like he, he thinks that you can't see him. So, yeah. I think that's why I wore the baseball cap all the time, because you can see it very open to the elements now. I can see all your face. Um, who has the issue with teeth? Yeah. Okay, do you not like them? or? What you, you like in your family? You like feet? You don't like teeth? He had... I don't like false teeth. Oh yeah, did he have issues with teeth too? Well, he hated the dentist. Oh, it's because he just kept showing me his teeth and saying they're okay. So, you'd like his teeth now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be proud of him. He must have a dentist up there in Planet Zog. I'll call it Planet Zog. <laughs> he must have a dentist up there. He, he, he loves that. <laughs> and he doesn't hurt, apparently. Who's had the... Mentioned a tattoo for the other lady. Who's had a tattoo done in honour of him? Lynn. I, I don't. There's one on her back as well. Yeah. Then when you thank her for them, uh, there's the one with wings. I don't know if we've got wings on one or like angels or fairies or wings or something. Then. No, that's the one I want to get. Okay. I've never had one. Lynn was talking about it as well. We've seen a picture. Then it's his way of saying he was with you when you saw that picture. It's got wings. Yeah. Okay. And it's got words in it. I'm terrified of needles, and pain. Let me go through labour and childbirth. Okay, before. no problem. You'll be okay. Will you please get it done for him? It's his way of acknowledging that when you were looking at it, he was with you. Um, he likes things like that. That means a lot to him. Um, then if you have that done, he'll be with you and he promises it won't hurt much. <laughs> he, he did put that much in. <laughs> <laughs> I, um... He, he, he hopes that Lynn gets them, more specifically for the kids, white feathers, he keeps leaving them. Um, apparently there'll be enough by Christmas to put round a photograph frame of him. And you'll know the frame and you'll know the photograph. And if they find them and keep them in a little jar and stick them, then by the time Christmas comes they'll, they'll be all surrounded and he says that's from Daddy and you need to let them know that that's from him. I don't know if somebody's suffering from anxiety or panic attacks now or can't breathe since his passing but you need to tell them that it'll be okay it's almost like i feel my chest is caving in and i can't breathe properly maybe it's just the anxiety and this is probably for the youngest it makes me feel around them that they're finding it difficult to cope with um tell them that dad is with them and that they'll be okay i'm always watching he's proud of them and will they stop saying, I wish Daddy could see this, or I wish Daddy could see this, because I'm with them every single day, I see everything. I see things I'm not even supposed to see. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> he wasn't one for emotion. He wasn't one for banding about I love yous unnecessarily. I don't know if you can count on one hand how many times he actually said it. Yeah. He needs to say it today. Bowing our head against it's a serious moment. You were amazing for him. You were one of the most amazing sisters. 
you know, you say the expression, you don't realise what you have until it's too late. Then that's to be said of you. He never gave you credit for what you did for him while he was here. He was hard work. He was difficult, stubborn, and sometimes couldn't be very nice. He wants to say sorry for all of that. But you have no idea how much you did for him while he was here. How much you kept him on the right track. And he wants to say to you right now how much he loves you. And he's sorry that he's had to wait until he passed and get me to do it for him. Because he just wished he had the courage to say it while he was still here. I need to say the same thing to Lynn. I, I took her for granted. I, I abused her trust, her faith. Um, I didn't realise what it was that we had that was so special until I looked down and realised that we didn't have it anymore. And if I'm bandying my I love yous around, I need to give one to her too. It's different with the kids. I was okay telling them. But when it came to me showing my true colours and showing who I was, I struggled with that. I hid behind everything. Hid behind the big I am. This is me bare naked. I hope not. <laughs> no, please. But don't start him off. But this is me saying I'm, I'm very raw at this point and very emotional. His mum's still here, yes. yes. He needs to tell Mum I'm sorry. She'll know why. And uh, I may as well go in for a hat trick and tell her I love her too. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to do and say the things I did. My, uh, my mouth often went off on its own. And I didn't have a filter to stop it. And some of the things I did and said could be quite painful and I'm sorry. His head's now that far down, it's nearly touching his, his chest. <sighs> but when he smiles, he's the most gorgeous person. His smile can light the room up. And he's, um, you're like that too. Is there anything you'd like to ask? I'm just glad that he's okay. And that he's got Martin. He's okay. Or that Martin's got Dad. Uh, do you know what? That's the right way around. Martin almost sent for him. It couldn't, I think Lynn sometimes questions that she should have gone. <laughs> it couldn't be the way around. It had to be the way it was. And if that's, what you all believe, I can't believe he's saying how right you all are. And he knows that with him acknowledging that, it's going to make it easier for you to get through the time. And that for him is, it's very blunt. Job done. That's it. I'm going now. I love you. Thank you. Better than I, better than I thought it would. Mm -hmm. I didn't think. I knew that my brother was waiting to see us. I didn't think that he would come through and be, you know, let his guard down and say to someone exactly how he was feeling. Um, that was not my brother. And most of what, what he said, you know, everything came through the way my brother was. And I think it does give comfort, you know, Knowing that there is something on the other side and that he is with loved ones, well, more so that he's with his wee boy. Um, it's still hard for us, so it's given, it has given a bit of comfort. An absolute stereotypical granddad. He did everything right that he could do. He needs to acknowledge her and how important she was to him. Um, a very close bond. Although she didn't get to spend a lot of time with him because he was taken from her. He keeps saying he's sorry. I'm sorry for going so quickly. Now his father must have passed before him because he's saying that John Mark II was there to take him across. And I guess for your daddy knew then that that was time there was no coming back. There is a significance to candles being lit, or somebody lighting a candle for him. My mum lights candles every night. She's got them all the way around the house. He loves it. And you need to tell her to keep doing it, even though I'm sure it's a fire risk. But That's <laughs> 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 your dad just being health and safety yeah. conscious. You um, are heading to bright, new, shiny places, apparently. Yeah. Uh, especially within work, and your dad is really encouraging you to do that, to leap forward. Take a step out of your comfort zone, Jill. This next year is you going to come out 
battling the world and your dad's gonna say, that's my girl, I made 